Thank you, Mr. Chair. I follow up with Mr. Schmidt. I, I'm presuming that uh, the Congressman Cleaver was referring to the op-ed by the two, the Kennedy Jr. and Trump Jr. And they suggested in their op-ed. Did you read it by chance, Mr. Schmidt? He didn't miss a lot. Um, it was pretty sophomoric, not junior. Um, and they said something that started with the fact that said there, there, there never should have been a war. The war shouldn't have been allowed to start. Well, they should have told that to Izvestia, not, not to the Politico. Um, you know, there's nothing that Ukraine could do but defend itself. And, and, and Russia came in lying to the last day that they weren't going to invade. Um, you're not concerned. I mean, he's threatened nuclear re response. A person like Putin, who is like one of the only people that really have a large nuclear arsenal, would know the results of a nuclear war would come back on them, correct? That's right. In, in, in immediate loss of that war in Ukraine were a uh, nuclear weapon to be used by the Russian Federation. And there would be a response by... NATO, the U.S., uh, the entire Western alliance. Absolutely. Right, nuclear attacks against Russia. Possibly. So they might even get his ballerina girlfriend. <laughs> so he I, I don't want to comment on the ballerina girlfriend or the comments of, uh, of RFK Jr. or uh, uh, the former president's son. So I will keep it at that. All right, but you feel secure he would not respond with a nuclear attack? I, I think that is very unlikely at this point. Yeah. Uh, they have engaged. They're basically at war with us anyway. Absolutely. Um, but they, they don't want to get into a full-scale war with, with NATO, and, and, and that's clear. But uh, Mr. Weiss has clearly shown, and you have too, things they've done, him mostly in personal attacks and you in physical attacks. Um, have all those attacks that you mentioned with the cutting the, the cords there and, and, and the, the, on the bottom of the ocean floor, have they been recognized as Russian attacks? That is a massive question, and uh, many of them have. Many of them have a significant amount of evidence that points towards Russia, uh, and many have been unattributed. And, and I will point out that certain countries uh, along NATO's eastern flank have been quicker to attribute and, and release data. I think Estonia has been part of this, uh, this effort, but certainly Poland, the Czech Republic, and of course we've seen the United Kingdom do this. Um, and, and that's why we really need to see Article 4 used. I've heard that there is pressure within NATO to not allow certain countries to use Article 4, and that is, again, not a, a military response, but a consultative mechanism to raise the public cost and understanding of the Putin regime that we know what's going on. We know these sabotage operations are coming from you, and we will do something to push back. Uh, and so to any of those uh, in Washington, in Berlin, and elsewhere that are, are the escalation managers that we've heard so much about that want to stop Article 4 from, from happening, it needs to happen. It's, it's something that we can use. It's a tool, and it can be collectively used by NATO member states that have seen these attacks take place. But I will say open source intelligence is so important to quicken that response because commercial satellite data in this new commercial space renaissance that we have is something that we can release instantly. It's online and we can look at the data and the evidence of these attacks and get that out way faster than declassifying uh, uh, military intelligence and, and other uh, data that we have. Thank you, sir. M Mr. Weiss, have you looked into anything about the death of Navalny, any research there? Um, my team at the uh, Insider, uh, which the, the head of the investigations unit is Christo Grozev, the man who identified Navalny's FSB poisoners and was in an Academy Award-winning documentary about that, we are currently investigating uh, his demise in prison. We don't agree with the U.S. intelligence assessment that it was accidental. Did anybody get a chance to see his body after it was taken from the uh, mortuary? I believe his body was returned to his family, but, I mean, the, the chain of custody from his death in the gulag to that point is, is the real question. Um, I don't know, I don't have details on sort of what might have happened forensically to it. Yeah. Um, they've never shown really who, who was responsible for killing Nimsov, although they think it was the Chechens, I guess. Well, um, there is some evidence that the Chechens, but with, in league with the FSB. Yeah. 
Um, travel patterns are essential in understanding Russian intelligence operations, including those that have a violent or kinetic nature to them. And I don't think, I, I guess my time's up, but on this map, they don't show, they show Madrid, but they don't show, I think there was a, a, a Russian soldier who was killed like on the coast in Spain. I just got back, uh, I was in Alicante this summer doing an investigation into the murder of that uh, Russian captain. Um, and yes, uh, Spain is a deeply penetrated country. I mentioned Alexander Litvinenko. Well, one of the things he was doing before he was poisoned with polonium-210 was helping the Spanish uh, counterterrorism authorities and counter-organized crime anatomize the extent of the Russian mafia in Spain. And the Russian mafia in Spain doesn't lift a finger without the help of Russian government officials and Russian intelligence organs. Well, thank you for your work, Dr. Schmidt, as well. And it's good to say, I, I, I've been to your country. I've met your leadership. They're fantastic. But it's good that they've got a man, too. <laughs>